Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Before I get started, I'll ask you to do me a quick favor and go down below and hit the subscribe button. And what that does, is when you subscribe, it will notify you when a new video is coming out. And if you don't mind, hit the like button while you're down there too. But today I'm going to show you a bicolored, layered, polished lime plaster technique using Grisello from the fine people at Fermilux. Um, what else is there? Nothing. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coat the surface using the Micro Primer. Primer. Micro Primer is a quartz-based product that cleans up in soap and water, can be used interior or exterior, tints with pigment, never paint. Um, that's it. I rolled this on using a 3 8 inch nap roller and after I did roll it, I took a sanding block and hit it real quick. The reason I use a small nap roller means not fluffy because fluffy leaves a texture and that little bit of texture can actually affect the overall appearance or how many layers we might actually have to use to bury that texture. Um, 3 8 inch nap roller, I hit it real quick with a sanding block and then dusted it off because we don't want any sanding dust on the surface. Now, what we're going to do is Grisello, line based. Can you see it? Venetian plaster, polished lime or filtered polished lime. Um, yeah, it's filtered because there's no aggregate in it. I want to make a whole different set of videos about actual product. No technique, product. We'll focus on product. Not right now. This day is a technique video. So what I've done is I tinted this using a, uh, let's go back, Crisello plaster. Filtered lime, filtered polish, filtered lime polish, polishing plaster. Ugh. Tints with lime compatible pigments, never paint, never universal colorants. The lime in this product will destroy or eat synthetic pigments and break them down, meaning it could turn chalky and not be a good look. Uh, lime compatible pigments never it cleans up with soap and water into your exterior the best thing to do if you want a specific color is when you order it when you call down to the, the distributor give them your favorite paint color usually from Benjamin Moore and uh, they'll match it for you and you don't have to do anything it's just stir it up when it gets here and put it on a wall now when you do mix this always mix it up because when it gets here it settles even though they mixed it yesterday it depends on where you are in this world uh, they're going to mix it up package it up and ship it to you. Well, during that shipping, it's going to settle in the bucket. So get yourself what we call a, uh, a cage mixer. It's, um, I don't even have one handy, but it's not a fin. So like, you know, this, this ah, metal piece comes down and there's like little fins that off of that. You don't want that. Those little fins are going to hit the side of the bucket, knock the plastic particles into the plaster and you're going to have a mess. A cage mixer is simply like a cage, like an egg beater. Is that right? Not an egg beater, but a cake batter mixer thing you use to make cakes with there's no sharp edges on it that way you don't scratch up your bowls same concept it's big you can get them at any of the big box stores uh, that way it goes inside the bucket and doesn't affect your plaster so the tools we simply need our Pavon trial stainless steel high quality as always there'll always be links in the description below so you can just go online and click 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 and get what you need without from the comfort of your own home and uh, I would actually ask you to can you use those links um, because that helps with supports this little project. All right, so first thing I did is it got my red. Well, it looks red, but we know what happens when it dries. That it turns pink. It always dries lighter. Thin coats, tight thin coats. It's okay, the primer's showing through. It's not going to hurt anything. Because we're going to build it up. But we want thin layers. One, if you put it on too thick, it's going to dry fast and crack. And we're not trying to create texture, we're trying to create the illusion of texture.
course I don't have enough to finish that little corner. Okay? Goes a long way. How far do you say? Well, I could tell you that I could probably get about 400 square feet out of a gallon. Yeah, about. But if you're just starting out in heavy hand, you might not get that. So, we're gonna let this dry 100%, come back, and then do the second step in the process, as seen a little bit. We're dry. So what are we gonna do? The next step. All right, same thing, same color, let's get to it. But remember what I say about like how much dark it is when it's wet. Always make the dry samples if you're making it yourself, for your shelf. Oh, got something in there. Go on. <laughs> Always working at regular organic patterns. If you work in these crazy like straight lines, that looks so good, you're gonna see those lines. When you start a wall, finish a wall. Don't take that phone call. It can wait. Don't take that call if you break. You don't need it. If you stop halfway through a wall, you're gonna see where you start and you stop. Now remember, I always work a thing, coach. One, I'm being respectful to the traditional technique. All right. There's so many ways we can do this, but I want to do it the traditional way. But I'm going to layer colors. So, so by working in thin coats, I'm actually to the humid state where the plaster of the plaster, where I could actually start to burnish it if I wanted to. Burnish, you say? What is burnish? To compress it. To burn the surface. Not really burn the surface, but see, it's already dry. Somebody goes, like, How do you do these big walls and make them look so pretty? You have to do the plaster and then come back and burnish it. No, I've, I've already started to do it. Like, watch, I just put that coat on. Trust me, there's no trick photography because I barely know how to use this camera. But look, can you kind of see the, like, some of the sheen starting? One, two, three. Look, you start to see it. Right there's a big shiny spot. See that? It's just how it goes, man. You don't need a big team of people to do a giant wall. You really don't. Um, take the time to learn it. So we're gonna let this dry 100%. Come back and do our next step. See a little bit? Hair's getting wild. Okay, we're dry. We're ready to move on to the third step of the process. What we're gonna do is take the tint-based plaster right out of the can. The tint-based plaster right out of the can, even though it looks white, in the bucket, can you see that? It's not very opaque. So if you think I'm gonna go, oh, let's order the bucket of the tint base and put it on the wall, and just stick it on the wall, it's gonna be white. It's gonna take you like 15 coats. You need to add white to it, okay? So I'm just gonna take this white plaster, same trial. Come back. Mm-hmm, a little too much. I diluted a little bit. I might have put a little too much in there. We'll find out in a second. The reason I diluted it down is because if it's too thick and pasty, it gets to be a little too heavy on the surface and becomes not super opaque because it's not it doesn't have the ability. But over a light color like this soft pink, it can be it can be overpowering and lose it. See how white it's getting? So if that was real thick right out of the can, man, wouldn't be too happy. Um, and I wonder how I found that out. I mean, I did it a couple of times. I'm like, wow. Just add a little bit of tap water to it, dilute it down, and get a nice consistency to it. So see as it's drying, look at that. It's still the opposite. I always tell you the plaster dries 20 to 30 percent lighter. This is drying like 20 to 30 percent whiter. Crazy stuff. All right, that's it. 100 percent coverage, full coverage. Again, I put it on. I pull it tight. I could go in there and burnish this if I wanted to. 
but I don't want to just yet. Not quite finished. But look how pretty that look is. You could simply have that and be finished with it and burnish that. All right, check it out. Look, it looks all textured. Actually, let's do something. Of course we're gonna do something. You're going, that's why we watch. Do something, quit talking. Clean the trial. I just put it on. I can go in here and pop, burn it, compress this to get that sheen that we're looking for. And you're like, that's ridiculous. He just put it on the wall. Yes, I always work thin, thin coats, all right? By working in thin coats, I'm actually starting to compress the plaster as I even apply it. Let's see now. Do you see how little effort that was? It's almost like laziness. Ha ha, watch it come in. See the sheen on there? Look at that already. Look. Can you see my big old head in there? I have to look off to the side. That's where the monitor is, okay? It's not that I'm not trying to pay attention. Huh. I mean, I know it's shiny. I gotta get the right camera angle. Can't get it. Daggone it. That stinks too much. You know what? It's such a light color. It's hard to see my reflection with all these lights in here. But we could leave that alone. If you liked it that way. It's one way of doing it. But we're going to do something else. So let's just dry 100%. Come back and get to it. Next step of the process. Three, two, one. Plaster's dry, so what we're gonna do is go back to our original paint color. Okay. And then go over top of it, 100% coverage. Thin coats, thin tight coats. Because I don't want all of the, uh, that white showing like that. I wanna sandwich it in between. that you can use two hands but I'm not using a left-handed trowel I don't get it it's not supposed to work without a left-handed trowel remember I put thin 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 coats on thin coats but I know not you see I'm not muscling it there's no reason to muscle it I can already go back there and burnish it Remember, this pink's gonna dry lighter, so we're gonna see more of the white in a minute. Look how easy this is to compress. If you see somebody in there grinding and cranking on it, all they're gonna do is destroy their body and have a very short career. And you'll see, I hit it, the compression. One, I usually go, what is that? Right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top. Just because, even though it's super smooth, there's still different things going on here, meaning some irregularities in the surface, very slight, subtle, that we can't see, we really can't touch it, but this super, sight, super straight blade does catch it, so it'll ride on the high. So like, let's break this down. See this coloration here and this coloration here? It's darker, darker, darker. These are the high spots from the previous coats. So what happens is when I come this way, this trial rides on top of this and this. 
So it compresses it. That's why it gets darker because there's more material. It's thicker. It's not catching this. Even though it does catch it, it doesn't catch it as much as this. So when I come at it from a different direction, if I right, back up, coming this way, it rides on here and here. Misses that. So now I gotta catch that. So when I come this way, I ride over this piece, not riding on the height, ride on the high, and then catch the low. Does that make sense? So I'm able to get 100% coverage when I compress. Pooey, right in the mouth. So look at that sheen, look at that. Yeah, there, there's that. There's my, yeah, see it? Isn't that pretty? Now, we're going to let this dry 100% because it will lighten up in color. So we're not getting a good representation of the overall, overall final finish that we're trying to get. So let's let it dry and we'll see you in just a little bit. We're completely dry. I pulled the tape and that's the final product. Super, super. <gasps> no, nothing's there. That's it. A nice bi-colored, layered, polished lime, Venetian plaster. Okay. Check it out. Look how textured it looks with all that going on. These couple spots here are a little strong. I'm not too concerned about it. Worst problems to have. See the shine? Look at that. These light colors don't really get it that well. They're bumping everything on the table here. Up oh, there, that's it. Woo! The cool, huh? Isn't that pretty? There you have it. Super simple. I'll have the links to the description. <laughs> links to the tools and materials will be placed in the description below. And um, that's it. But before we leave, I ask you to do me a favor. Go down below, hit the subscribe button. And what that does, it will notify you when a new video is coming out. And uh, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it if you did that too. But that's it. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Foe School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.